It's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afo Labi Brown, as always. I have the ladies with me. YK into building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, morning. Good to see Good you on Wednesdays. We're seeing you on Wednesdays now. Yeah. That's well, fantastic. I think today is Theo's birthday, so. Oh. Happy birthday, Theo. Happy birthday, Uncle Theo. Yeah, and my cousin also, and it's on Ransom Kuti. Oh, happy birthday. It's his birthday, so happy birthday. Is there a party happening today at Uncle Theo's? No. Eh, Theo, okay. Party. No way. <laughs> <laughs> He will, he, he will tell me my life history. Uh -huh. But you're going to mesmerize him after the show. Uh-uh. I trust him. <laughs> this is your high heel self. This is your high heel This is your This is your high heel self. There's no way you don't mesmerize. <laughs> I've had them for about over 10 years. Wow. In wow. fact, it was my brother's partner that bought them for me. Meanwhile, this is my second time of wearing them, but I'm walking with caution. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so like, like six inches. I hope you have slippers somewhere. <laughs> How are you doing? Not even in the car. Yeah, yeah. Where you plant Man. cakes, all this stuff, you know, at this private yeah. stuff. For yeah, the there's a cake. There's okay. a cake. Okay. Okay. Right. In his office, we we'll cut a cake in his office. Nice. Nice. Okay. <laughs> how are you doing, so, Nima? Okay. I have those baby shout outs. So Again? Mm -hmm. See, this is how you study strength. Now, before you know it, who is that calling us? My children's mother, Mrs. Ola in Cardini, it was her birthday yesterday and I missed it. Mommy knows, I'm very, very sorry. I'm going to do a post for her later on Instagram. And it's my husband's birthday tomorrow. Ah. So Ziba, are you on the show birthday. tomorrow? No. no. Yeah, that's okay. I planned my own. On like Waiki. Hey. On a break and on a break. Yes, a long weekend. So see you guys next week. After no. Oh, wow. nice. Wow. Yes. Yes. You know, I don't want to just bring this up, but there's a... <laughs> there's a training video about an Elijah, which I thought was a very, very yeah. rude, very rude, rude. I have a post video. for that. I'm but I think that um, it's good to just know that, listen, we're all humans. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, we know, all and we all do no things, man. Is it the saying of the prophet that God punish a man who's, who calls his wife in private mm. and she answers him and then he divulges mm. the business of the other room? So even after divorce, it is still mm. a private matter. Yeah. Yeah. And she was just mm. a victim. Yeah, yeah. just a victim. For her. I'm going to write she something. Very, about very later. painful. I've been too busy to do the break to show you. Video. It was disgusting. It was really disgusting. Totally disgusting. No, not about the Elijah. Okay, okay which one? Another this video. one. This is one pastor. What happened to him? Oh. Thank you. Let me finish my shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. In that place, my boy is my best friend. She's based in the UK. I hope you're watching. Happy birthday okay. too. Happy so birthday. herself and my husband are birthday mates, and it's tomorrow. Nice. The bowling. Very nice. Hello, birthday girl <laughs> in the in the <laughs> making. In the making. Mine is on Sunday. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so um, I did um, a root canal therapy in yeah. 2009 because I had a part, not the full tooth, a part of the tooth was bad. So they had to root it out and then fill it up. And I was supposed to crown it. But uh, I, got, I wanted to crown it with gold. They gave me an option of using gold or using the color of my you know, tooth. Uh, tooth. And then um, my brother scared me. I said, hey, any day arm robbers will catch you. They will just pull the teeth because it's gold. <laughs> you know, so I forgot about the crown. And then the day before yesterday, I was flossing after eating ugufi, and mm -hmm. the thing just fell out. Oh, sugar. And if I smile, it's here. Very uh, close. Are you the person that sent Mariah the text? No, I didn't send her. She knew the story. I, so I, I just, just used the text. Yeah, so I cool. got there, and they gave me options. But I was still optimistic. I said, oh, auntie, check again. Check again. Let's be sure. I still feel that the roots can hold for another refilling. Check again. And they checked and said it's okay. So um, next month, I will do another refilling and then I'll crown it. Okay, but I won't use gold. I'll just do the normal. Yeah, you better. Uh, Mr. Dan said I should ask you. He said he has been calling you to tell you happy birthday in advance. Oh, I'm yes. busy. I don't take my calls most times. So at least he's hearing. Mr. Oh. Dan, I've sold Mr. out. Mr. Dan, I'm sorry. I'm busy. <laughs> he can drop a message. It's mm. better. How are you doing? I'm fine, Jerry. I'm very <laughs> looking at me. Yeah. Remind me to show you that video. Hey. Oh, we watch video. What happened? Right? Like now I can hear you. Just what happened? He was he, he him and the babe. Just... This okay. pastor and the babe. You know doing the pastor. Eh? Really? They, they were filming themselves. They were oh, nice. they recently were, or very old. I don't know. I just got the video recently. Yesterday, <laughs> I saw the video yesterday. Ah. Ah. <laughs> you see? It was shocking. <laughs> Why? Why is it shocking? Because the pastor. No. I will show you. Yeah, okay, you know what? While we're going on the break, send it to me now. Hey, I'll find a way to watch it. Gossip after this table. Send it to me. I'll send it. it. Let's go. Let's go on a break. We'll be right back. Send it to my kid. Stay 
tuned. Your view will be right back. Uh, let's start with the punch. <laughs> Massive job cut looms, dollar hit 590 naira as forex scarcity bites harder. Dangote's $2.5 billion fertilizer plant will boost food production, says Buhari. Obiano's government left 100 billion naira debt and 300 million naira cash, says Soludo. ONU promotes indicted ex FIRO uh, boss demoted by Buhari for PhD fraud. Mother, son arrested for abducting, raping Ikiti SS3 student for three years. Buhari seeks speedy completion of airport concession and second Abuja runway. Power Ministry lists obstacles, reps decry excuses for blackout. Tambor rejects zoning, Southwest PDP insists on Southern presidency. Okay, which story are we starting with? Let's okay, take the major headline. Yes, please. It's quite uh, worrisome. You know, we've had uh, lingering foreign exchange scarcity in the country, and um, it's continued to worsen back per day. Right now, the exchange rate in the parallel market is inching towards 590 to a dollar, according to the punch. And they said that uh, this will, is going to affect um, a lot of manufacturers. There will be massive job losses, among other sectors, now, you know, eight months ago, the capital, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria said they were going to stop the sale of Forex, which they actually did, and which was supposed to boost, you know, liquidity of Forex. But right now, we're not seeing anything. Uh, right now, uh, the current price for dollar is 585 to a dollar and uh, 785 to a pound. And it's likely going to get worse. Now, if you are going to do any form of transaction in the bank in dollars, is now there's a cap now for twenty dollar per month for online uh, transactions. I'm very worried because I'm currently doing my masters in one of the schools, and I need to pay at least. It used to be GTB used to do a hundred dollar. Uh, per month. So now I can't even pay $100 for my fees. It has to be $20. So how many times do I pay before mm. I pray they don't kick me out? So the, um, the issue now is we're likely going to have a devaluation of our Naira. Mm. That's where the problem mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And it's really worrisome. Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, they are pleading with the federal government to see what they can do to ensure that this thing, they find a way to ease them so that a lot of people don't lose jobs. It's really painful. Mm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take the sorry the okay. human interest story. The um, this young girl, uh, she was going for her lessons in preparation of her senior secondary school examination when the uh, boy Adewumi lured her into his house. She got to his house, then he gave her drugs, and she's been there for three years hmm. with the aid of his three mother. Three years. Three years. years. The mother, when she didn't come home, went to the police, hmm. and. Um, they didn't find her, so she, she now, um, some, from some information she got, she uh, went to uh, the police and said, look, she suspects her daughter is in this house. They got there, she's eight months pregnant, hmm. she, and the boy, anytime he needed money, would give Pimp her to her guys. Out. 10,000, 20,000. To sleep with her. He, he, he's also using her as yeah. a false prostitution. Yes. Yes. See, not in light yes. of drink. And yeah. so yeah. Him, his, him and his mother have been arrested. And the victim, well, poor girl. As I said, she go back Three, to hanging. This hanging, she really needs to go back she to Not go. only did you They haven't her. even taken her to the hospital for, for any form of check. For anything, no pen, uh, 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 anything. What nonsense? Eight months pregnant. In 2022. That woman will not die well. And the woman, too. Yeah. She's a mother. Oh, so, oh God! No, 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 no! It's really, really bad. Really, really, so, really, really was a terrible, terrible, terrible story. story. Okay, there was a story that covered. One day, go ahead. Sorry, um, someone the, um, over our power issue. Oh, you took that story. That was a story okay, on the yeah, table. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Let me leave because I have the few rules. Okay, okay, so, okay. so the power ministry. So the National Assembly summoned the P Pamsek actually he represented the minister mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, at the at the uh, at the house. I'm telling you, we never hear from him. Anyway, they summoned him to because they of course they berated what is going on with the power sector. Why we having this 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 um this blackout in the country so in his response he was making a presentation saying that um he listed the challenges facing the past sector says that there was it ranges from low gas supply low hydro levels high cost of gas as well as disequilibrium between the power generations transmission and the discos now after listing all the problems so what is the solution, solution. now no his solution. response he said 
in the response to this to the challenges what they, they said they have already called an emergency meeting with key stakeholders okay. in the gas to power value chain and the meeting has reached far has reached far reaching resolutions mm. to attack the key issues to address the situation Bam. and they were like ah, that is not a resolution mm -mm. <laughs> that what is wrong with you you, you, you had a meeting mm -hmm. that has reached a far reaching mm -hmm. which resolution far -reaching? what which is the far reaching tell us that that wasn't said mm -hmm. so obviously we're frustrated that this you have to solve this problem of power you can we have to be, go beyond this rhetoric that we keep seeing nothing is really done you, just like white says you have a committee to discuss that yeah, nothing will the happen committee cannot solve the problem <laughs> yes a committee is a group of individuals who singularly can do nothing but come together to, to agree, agree that, that nothing can, can be done. Simple, <laughs> <Why can't? laughs> That thing must be put in. <laughs> that thing must be in Webster's <laughs> dictionary. <laughs> Honestly, let's take the so, FIR story. So the Federal Institute of Industrial Research, Osho, they have Wahala now. They are fighting there now because that demoted former boss, who is um, Chima Igwe of the agency, who was supposed to be the acting director general of the agency, following a fictitious PhD. He got from the university in Benin Republic, and he had, you know, gotten promotions over 18 years to that position. Was found out by ICPC that he didn't have that degree, and that he was uh, falsely parading himself to, to be a PhD holder. ICPC is still prosecuting the man right now, as we speak, at, in an, at an Ikeja High Court. And yet, the Minister for Agriculture, I think, uh, Bunaya Ono, has promoted, you see, uh, reinstated him. This is a man who was indicted to the position he was holding for that 18 years before he started to parade himself mm. with that fictitious uh, PhD. But the minister thought, against, as against the president's um, instruction, he should be promoted. promoted. And remember, the minister had already written in the past when he had these issues. He wrote to the, to the, federal, to the president asking them to confirm his appointment as director general. And so the minister is still on where he is. In this country, oh, under our very before, <laughs> still insistent that this man, Impunity. whether he gets a fictitious PhD or, or not, not, whether he's, he's a merit, he merits the position or not, as long as they have their whatever affinity that they have, he must be the head Ma of Maybe he's good at his job. At which good? Because <laughs> his workers are worried, and we must have right. consequences. Let's you cannot break. institute uh, some, some, somebody that is demoted and is presently in court facing uh, criminal charges. I don't Let's go it. on a break. When we come back, we continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're moving on to the nation. PDB quakes over zoning. APC convention. Buhari invites chairmanship aspirants. Woman sets daughter ablaze in Ogun. Buhari, the $2.5 billion Dangote fertilizer plant will boost Forex earnings. NBA warns against reckless court rulings. Akira decries invasion of OAU by traditionalists. Okay, let me start with the major headline on um, PDP. So there's a back and forth, you know, both parties are trying to um, agree who the presidential ticket candidate would be. So there was a meeting yesterday or over the weekend, I think, um, where the leading heads at PDP met. And um, the presidential aspirant, Amin Tamba was insisting that they should focus on winning and not zoning. So there's two issues. Should we focus on winning, and as in the same strategy APC used in 2015 to get the election, where they sat down together and agreed on Muhammad Buhari, who has the ability to get a huge block from a certain place? Or should we just say, because it's the turn of the South, we then zone. But if you zone into the South, there's a possibility that you might lose. So there's a back and forth between Bode George and Tambo. Tambo was insisting, let's focus on winning. Bode George is saying, nah, 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 nah. Let's focus on zoning, because indeed, it's the turn of the South to be president, and that, and that he's putting the cart before the horse. You wanted to add something, YK? Um, I wasn't going to add about the story anyway, because you've pretty much said everything. I was just going to say, I think that um, that zoning, you know, it should be about competence mm. to me. I, Nigeria cannot afford an incompetent leader right now because of his zone. So I'm not saying north or south or east or west, mm. but if I was going to say zone, it should come for the east. Yeah. 
a leadership so, role from the East so, so what, If you want to even make this an issue, it's nice for us to say competence, but in certain places, certain groups, certain groups of people, nobody cares about competence, it's about influence. Who is that person that I know? Who is the leader that, that looks like me? That is me. Mm -hmm. That's who can influence me to vote. You, you're looking for competence. And how many of you are actually, what's the percentage of those of you looking for competence? Mm -hmm. Really, let's, let's be realistic with Nigeria. Our, our people, who are those? Who are those who are looking yeah. for competence? Mm -hmm. Or online. those who are, yes. yes. So, uh, so let's talk about our own Something to do with our brain yeah. structure. It's not going... Our ah. uncle's uh, refiner uh, fertilizer yes, so plant was commissioned. Yes, uncle they, Dangote that has refused to come on this show. It's not more my uncle. I'm so no, this time around, I'm now, I'm now Boaz's uncle. Boaz's uncle. Boaz's uncle. Boaz's uncle. Boaz's uncle. We've tried to invite Boaz's him several times. Ah. Boaz, well, he's got his competition. So he's a very so busy, uncle. I hear he's nice. nicer. Man. <laughs> but um, I must commend him yeah. for looking at this terrain that everybody is thinking, let's just leave. Yeah. All the difficulty and insisting this is where to do business. Because now, according to the president, this fertilizer is already exporting fertilizer to the US, to India, to Brazil, and we know this is a major forex area. So the president is predicting economic and agricultural goals, but this I know for other countries, yes, but for Nigeria we need to deal with insecurity in the farms and the and, uh, farming areas first. Then the CBN governor had something to say, he said it was emotional, that is a great initiative, they're all lauding him. I hope millionaires like him, mm. who would rather secure their money in foreign banks and all of that, would think again and empower their people by creating investment Jobs. opportunities yeah. for themselves here. And also, the Lagos State governor was happy about it, saying that the Lekki Free Trade Zone, the houses, is refinery, the 650,000 barrel per day refinery. And um, the um, fertilizer plant was conceived by Ashiwa Dibola Metinubu. And that because of that, there's lands for investment, all of that in the Bejuleki area. And that Lagos, if you are ready for investment, Lagos is ready to provide land to anybody that is looking to come here. Let's beg our Nigerians who like to go and put money in Swiss banks and all of that till they die, the money is useless. To invest it here. It's only generating interest for those countries. Mm. Try and invest here. Do right. what you need I to do. I hope they are listening to you. So we have economic them, our favorite uh, governor, Governor Charles Soludo. Um, that's the, fav the most favorite right now on this table. <laughs> Has said <laughs> yesterday that he inherited 100 billion in the coffers of the state. So, however, there's uh, about 300 to 400 million uh, left in the years that he can begin to work with, but though they are still handing over, so he's going to have all the total. They said uh, till uh, 31st of December there was an audited report of the finance statement. That one is in public domain and he's going to try as much as possible in this his administration to ensure that everything spent will be made public so that people can understand what is happening. He also promised to take these people out of poverty. He's going to find ways to bring investment to ensure that they build more funds in the coffers of the state. Moving on quickly to Daily Sun, fireworks are sent over court judgments on electoral bill. Hmm. Uh, FG declares war on oil thieves. Niger governors gives political appointees. Civil servants March 31st deadline to resign. Police seal Cross River Assembly turn back workers. Philip Itambua, body judge clash over zoning. Airport concession to be completed Q4 2022, says federal government. And Obiano left 300 million naira cash, over 100 billion naira debt, says Suludo. Okay, which story are we starting with? Uh, we have a lot of um, reports on different uh, oil thefts, especially when it comes to um, the oil companies. And um, according to the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, they said that they're going to set up a team of uh, panelists, a team of experts to find out and do a thorough audit of the activities of op operators in the upstream petroleum industry, especially in the last two years. So one of the things they are going to be doing is to ascertain the actual volume of crude oil stolen by vandals, because there's a lot of speculations out there on the volumes that are stolen. So they want to find out the real volume that has been stolen. They are also going to be working with a lot of security agencies to ensure that they nip this in the bud. And um, there was also something they wanted to do um, that was very important. Mm, I think I've lost that. I'm trying okay, to let me go to the major headline. So this back and forth, remember <clears throat> this issue that happened with the Federal High Court? So the judgment, if you recall, a recent judgment by the Federal High Court um, saying that the, they declared that Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Constitution of the New Electoral Act illegal caused a heated debate yesterday at the floor. Um, this was between the APC and the PDP lawmakers. So initially, uh, I'm trying to see who started. Senator Thompson Sekibo from River State led his colleagues to saying that, listen, 
um, it is wrong to start this kind of precedence where we agree on a bill and then the, the courts uh, nullifies it, that this is wrong. And he said, if we allow it to stand, future actions of this parliament will be challenged in court by interested parties. Now, the APC, I think it was the Omo uh, Agege, the Deputy Senate President, was saying that, yes, this is something that, that is worth arguing or de debating on the House. Well, because Tambua was not, I'm sorry, Lawan was not available at the time, they should defer the debate to when he returns. Of course, there's a back and forth that ah, since you are the deputy president, you should be able to uh, go ahead with this debate. So the PDP are insisting that we must debate it now. But the APC guys are agreeing with Omar Gege that they should defer it. And at the end of the day, the the deferring had won. the deferring team had won had won, won the day, and then they had to defer it to when they had Lamar. So, so, so in a related story, in Cross River, following okay. the judgment of uh, yeah, that's sorry. I was going to take it, but right. Right. no, no, right. go on, go on. Of Justice Taiwo in uh, at the Federal High Court, you know, sacking 20 of the lawmakers who had de defected along with the governor to the APC, mm -hmm. the police had to quickly go and barricade mm -hmm. the um, House of Assembly in Cross River State, preventing what they suspect to be a possible breach of peace by the lawmakers, you know, from insisting to come in. And the lawmakers are presently in, at the Court of Appeal trying to vacate that judgment that they got from the Federal High Court. That's trying to appeal the judgment, not vacate it, but trying to appeal the judgment. Mm. So, yeah. Okay, quick call now to Vanguard. No pact to cede presidency to Southwest. APC bigwigs insist. Buari impressed with Dangote's 2.5 billion air fertilizer plant. Let's find a story of not taking. 40% Nigerians below poverty land, says World Bank. Mm. Um, FG reviews auto policy as Oshimba inaugurates Toyota service facility. How police authorities shielded Abakiari since 2008, says National Human Rights Commission boss reveals. Vandalism, FG probes oil companies and activities. Bamiche Longa State Government arranged BRT bus driver for alleged rape and murder. Okay, let's start with Bamiche. Who has that story? Yes, I have the story. So um, the case has been taken to court and um, he's been given, um, he's facing a four count charge, ordering on rape, conspiracy and murder. And um, according to, he has pleaded not guilty to the matter. So they are still going to remand him in prison and defer the case. I think the case will be picked up again in May, May okay. 10, 11. Was there another you wanted to take that? Was yes, I wanted, that's mm -hmm. the 40%. Yes. Yeah, let me quickly get it. So um, the World Bank has said that uh, Nigerians are living below the poverty line. 40% of Nigerians are in this poverty line. And the poverty threshold is set at $1.90, which is about 800 naira per day. If they really do the calculation, and some people don't even get up to 500 naira per day. And uh, they are saying one of the reasons we're still in poverty is because our population growth outstrips our gross domestic growth. So we are burning plenty and we cannot measure up. We cannot find, you Life know, there. yes, we cannot fend for them. And that's one of the issues. However, they didn't tell us how to solve this problem. So I think we need to start asking ourselves questions. Someone Even in this calculation, we have, we have not done census in a very long time. So I'm sure by the time we now do census, we know the number of people yeah, we have. Yeah. So Someone I can't talk about how census, the police how you, how you, we have um, to authority like shielded Abakari. We have to run. We run out of time. Okay. That's all we can take on the front page review. When we come back, move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So yesterday we took a report about the fact that some people, some traditionalists, were protesting the appointment of the current VC of Obafemi Awolo University, uh, Professor Bamire. And this obviously was a cause of concern to many Nigerians, especially because this was a decision that was taken by the school governing body. And it seemed like the traditionalists came to the school to protest the, the appointment. Now, people are discussing and saying, 
what does this portend for our system? Um, is it that when we have a grouse with the system, we defer to a traditional way? And even if we want to defer to traditional, was it properly used at this time? Was it properly, um, were, they, were, they, were they doing the right thing? Was that the right avenue to address their grouse about this appointment? Let's hear your thoughts, especially if you're from that, if you're from that school and from that area. You can call us on 081-270-5367, 091-390-7694. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your TVC so we can read your tweets. All right, so let me start with BC because I know that you were on the show yesterday. We, we, took, the, we took it very briefly. When you read that story, what, what did you think? We will always have this sort of problem if we still see ourselves as our tribe before the nation. If you still see yourself as, I am a Yoruba person before I'm a Nigerian. I'm an Igbo person before I'm a Nigerian. I'm a Calabar person before I'm a Nigerian. And so what they are fighting for is, in their mind, a form of injustice because they feel that uh, the person who took up that position is not an indigent. So in their mind, somebody has come from wherever to come and rip us off on not remembering that we are all supposed to be working together for the good of the school, the good of the nation, so to speak. And so um, we need a lot of mindset change. And that's why I'm one of the people who will advocate that when you're filling forms, we remove that state of origin. Nobody cares. You are a Nigerian, you are a Nigerian. If you are born in a state, you have spent 10 years in that state, 20 years in that state, you're automatically a member of that place. We need to start changing our mindset to understand that we are the same, we are together. As long as that person is competent and qualified for that position, that person can have it. If it comes to the time where an indigent is supposed to get the position, the person will have it. So we are here to work and ensure the good of either the school or the country. So um, also, I, I spotted there's this thing we always do when it comes to our African religion, and I was just discussing with YK. We paint it bad. When we want to, uh, we, we don't see them coming out with this African religion to fight for uh, people who have been raped. We fight for um, finding a way to drive out all the bandits. We don't use that. So when it comes to um, showing how dark and dirty our religion is, that's when we see them come. And people will look back and say, ah, is this what you people want me to be practicing in African religion? African religion has been used to stand for fairness, justice. I remember growing up and the stories I heard my father say about how the religion has been used to protect the people. It's not for things like this. So we mess it up. And tomorrow you are complaining that nobody wants to, you know, uh, stay with the African religion. Everybody's running to a Yibo, Yibo, Yibo. But you are showing us the bad part of it. Okay. We don't want to see it. So oh. please, let us try as much as possible to... Um, be, so the thing is, the um, educated ones understand, are beginning to understand when, that we are one. Yes. When it comes to jobs like this, it's all about competence okay, and let me, let me pause But how do we now teach those local ones Okay, let, we'll, 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 come, we'll, come, we'll, come, we'll come to the solution. I, I would like to start with the initial and then... You. Now, you said something which was, I thought was like, something I would like to also happen a bit. This issue of diversity. Diversity shouldn't it be our strength mm. than, our division, than, than our weakness. Because if you are Yoruba, if you are you are Jebu, let me just say you are Jebu, mm -hmm. and I am, what's the other one, Egba, and we're different. But shouldn't be, we be, uh, shouldn't there be strength in that difference where mm. you're a proud Egba, I am a proud Ijebu. When and even think. though we are still different, we understand, okay, me, I'm living in your town, Ijebu land. I'm living in your town. And I respect that I'm living in Ijebu town. Yes, I've been here for 20 years. Mm. I'm still an Igba person. But I respect you, the, the, what do you call it, the, um, the traditional of... and everything of that. And I, order, I, understand, and I understand and I respect the system that is in place. Therefore, should I now demand that because I am Igba, I must become the chief? Of this, of this town, because I've been here for 20 years. It's just a conversation we're having. What do you think? So, so the traditional soul is very, very separate from this, um, things like this. This mm. is a purely academic and administrative oh, yeah. issue. It just, yeah. So University of Ife is not even the state-owned school. It's a federal university. And they have their internal uh, mechanism for appointing or promoting anybody. This was the uh, um, deputy vice chancellor of academics before he became vice chancellor substantive before he was appointed. And now everybody in the state are now bringing issues of where he's from. Fortunately mm. for him, the person they want and him are both from Osho state, and that still doesn't count. Imagine. They are now saying they, if an indigenous, want an if a person on the mm. VC ship. You would think that they're talking about the honest truth. Ah. Mm. You know, Nima has, has said this thing some time ago. I, I didn't 
fully understand when she said it many years. I can't remember how long it was. But you're saying that we, we that are screaming for a regional government, <laughs> if we break this thing to regional, we will still have exactly <laughs> the same problem. Where again. somebody within Oshun is still complaining that mm, ah, you're not from my own side. Mm. Yeah. So that is so oh we are extremely divided. From but we pretend side. as if, oh, we this we want regional government. That regional government might just not hold. We, continue, with all this kind of we continue happening. to be dividing mm. it in, in, within ourselves yes. still to the to the to the to your, to your, to your household. Yeah. To your household. Yes. We will do it because because family, per name. Yes. Wow. Exactly. Moriah yeah, yeah, household. Yes. Yeah. 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 Moriah of Alabu Brown. I'm telling because you. Because if you come to royal siblings, I know. Children, uh -huh. one state. Yes, everybody. Uh, exactly. Obey Ajilu Ubo mm -hmm. and her family, mm -hmm. one, one state. state. <laughs> when they do that, when they have 200 million, uh, 200 200 million, million states, states, maybe they are heading well, we to come down. <laughs> because if you, you, you see the royals to where they have family size, they top by top. Mm. Inside the one family, like my we mother's family, fight. the darkness is now. They've had a royal also forever. They are the same grandfather's children. Because of royals too, they have divided, they have continued to divide and continue <laughs> to divide. And so if you will see people taking sides, if you don't pick a stand and leave it at that, all these abuses will happen. The one that is painful is what BC talked about now. The abuse of the traditional practice and religion of, yeah. our, of our forefathers before we came, before uh, foreign religions came. Every time you see our people want to portray our own, you, you, you would never want to be a part of it. In evil. Mm. Mm. In the, it's not even just evil, the abuse of it. The drama, the gra gra but I actually enjoy, I, I love, see, let me tell you what I liked about the this whole thing. I like the fact that they came out. You know, you hear about them, you don't really see them. You know they are there when Oni is going. When Oni is there, you see all the drama. Mm -hmm. But to, to, to think that we, they, these people actually exist, they actually came out mm -hmm. into the university campus. It was wrong, but More it was interesting to see that they are there. I, I, the I person that is inciting them behind the scenes, why came up? Somebody is inciting these people mm. behind the scenes. That's my point of view. What is their stake in this? Exactly. They are not students of the school. Uh, they are not staff of the school. They say they are people of Ife. Mm. It is not Royal too we are talking about. It's not about Ikeji or Oni or but, Tu Oni. It's but not know, Ikeji. My father-in-law was, uh, was, uh, was a lecturer at the OAU and he was the university librarian for many years. I think for, So I know that this struggle mm. is not new to yeah, them. Wow. There's always that struggle of, okay, whose turn is it? Oh, he's an equity man. Does he deserve to be the person? There was that back and forth, and it took a lot of fighting, a lot of lobbying, a lot of, you know, trying to talk to all these various stakeholders. These guys are stakeholders, whether I want to believe it or not. Yeah, a lot of things are happening. They are stakeholders within yeah, that community. I see, the thing week. is that there's when they have their, their... The people that attend the university are not all from equity That's state, the that point. Not? So why, why are they... You see, I think it is completely misplaced. It should not even be happening, but it just shows the moral decadence that is happening in our society today. That traditionalists, or I, I don't even want to call them traditionalists because I just want to call them uh, <laughs> the, the disturbers. Yes. yes. You know, just come in there to come and disturb and disturb the peace. And they should have all been arrested By now, for disturbing the peace. I say, would you leave the arrest? <laughs> I, 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 I know they cannot arrest them. Did they not arrest them at they Tojota? We did not see drama. They should get they so arrest them at Tojota. Every well, time they remove it. It. <laughs> it's the <laughs> rubbish. Don't what? disrespect the tradition, I'm not, please. Excuse me, that's not the tradition. These are not the traditional. These are not the I can tell you for fact that what they're doing is totally wrong. They don't do, yes. You don't use your, your uh, even if it's in Christianity or Islam, God Come says, on, you don't use it for, for, to, for your own uh, self For your own personal uh, gain. Yes. yes. You don't do that. They use it for personal gain, and it has nothing to do with nothing the education of the children. In fact, I they should carry that their juju. Let me carry it to... Uh, okay. uh, I would like us to wrap up on education this. minister. Yeah, and go and be singing that oh, our children need to come back exactly. to school. Yeah. 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 That was busy. Was, that was busy. Was all the allowance was in the Nigeria and out and beyond because they say they're in diaspora. Yes, this yeah. is the time for people to come and call this Oniba Jess among you people. These disgraceful elements that they are not part of you and, mm. and disassociate from them. Mm. And I expect the traditional schools, all the traditional schools, royal schools in Ife. To the, in uh, in Oshu, not to talk of Ife alone, to come out and call out these people and separate yourself from them. Mm -hmm. Let the school Especially institution the run itself 
as a federal institution that it is. Mm. And if there are any, any reservations about the appointment of the VC, let it be dealt with academically. Probably, yeah. We have our own ways. Let's deal with our own yeah. uh, uh, matters. I, I, I want I to add. add. You have to I yeah. that the only has not even have not said anything. <laughs> I want to add that and you, and Nima mentioned something very important that uh, these people are being used. So what happens is, in any form of religion, there's always the good size mm -hmm. and the bad size. And selfish people will always use the bad size mm -hmm. to work against other things. So mm -hmm. people are definitely, people that are aggrieved by this positioning are definitely fighting. And so they are using these people. And you people that allow yourselves to be used, I hope you know what you're doing at the end of the day, okay. because you're painting yourself bad and mm -hmm. nobody will want to join you. Mm -hmm. So this is not the time we're going to be doing it. This is the 21st century for crying out loud. I saw the ridiculous waka and it was just funny. Okay, it's interesting how one second we all talk about let's go back to the culture. Not this time. And next second we're like, nah, no, it's no, ridiculous. No, I'm 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 yeah, yeah, I'm 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 no, I'm trying. I'm trying to get a conversation, I'm, Mikey. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see. I'm, I'm trying to. You I'm trying to see different Can't angles. Be is it in Gigi or who is the? I'm trying to see. Adam Adam Adam. We're trying. Yes. Maybe when you see that so what we have resolved is that. We can better utilize these traditionalists. Use them well. And use them to go, let them go and march what's the to the presidency or to the Ministry of yeah. Education the and talk about, and, sorry? What's the injustice they're carrying their elbow for, right? Uh, uh, nothing. Because those days, when they used to say, return something in my own place, it means that there's been an injustice and we must clean it. And they want to fight. What exactly are they cleaning this clean? Maybe that's the question we should be asking them. Do you know? We don't know. They, no, no, they should tell us. If they're saying that there it's could a be that is an injustice, injustice. they're cleaning There's that. a possibility. <laughs> ah. No, no, no. Yeah. Doing Nollywood movies. Keep possible. They're doing Nollywood movies. 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 Is it <laughs> possible? Is it possible? I think they're going to Is it yeah. possible that this position was rightfully supposed to be for YK? And then for some elements made it Nima's position. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say, you know what? The God said it's supposed to be for Waiki. And they're now coming yeah, out and saying, let's go on a break. We'll break back. 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 We'll break I'm just saying that. If we get Waiki. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So um, we heard about the breaking news of fire. We heard of a breaking news of fire uh, in Akpongma right now, and it's important for us to get an update on what's going on. So we have our correspondent, Sarah, there to give us an update. Good morning, Sarah. Are you there? Hello, Sarah. Are you there? Good morning, Sarah. Are you there? Can you hear me? But if you can see what I'm showing you right now, you can see the smoke just behind me. So we're at, um, at Pogbo. Mariah, I can hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Volume. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Yes, you can see what is happening here. We, we heard that um, the fire started at about um, 2 a.m. Um, that's this morning. And uh, since that time, we've seen that um, emergency responders have been uh, at the scene trying to put out the fire. And so what we see right now is that um, they are still at it. They are still trying to put out the fire. And um, f before we got here, we saw that the traffic uh, situation, of course, is terrible, I can tell you, Mariah. So from, um, uh, we've been coming from Ojota all the way down here. We had to just stop at a point and then take a bike to get to this point because the traffic is on lockdown. So motorists that are coming in from um, the, the, the mainland, which is uh, from Ojota or from um, um, wherever they are coming to, if you're using want to use this place to connect this bridge to connect um, right. that's um, the island that will not be possible because as you can see this is the Akomba bridge if my cameraman can uh, take you through what is happening right now uh, the, the emergency responders are still trying of course to put out the fire uh, we still don't know what caused the, the fire yet um, emergency responders of course will give us that update later mm -hmm. on uh, but for now we see that uh, the traders who are those occupying under the bridge are trying to take out their stuff you know Right. so that the fire does not get to it. If uh, of, It's sad that um, we cannot show you so many pictures here. And so um, that's what you see right now. People Sarah. are, of course, trying to salvage the situation, Sarah. see what they can do to, of course, ensure that lives and property is kept safe. Now, can you, can you, can you give an idea of how much damage we're talking about? I know it's hard for you to, um, give, to have the numbers, but how bad is it? I mean, is it really bad or was it contained by the officials on time?
Okay, Sarah, let me say that, take that again. Can you have an idea, can you give us an idea of how bad the damage is? Or was it properly, was it um, contained on time by the oh, um, state oh, officials? Your view delay is crazy. Okay, she can't hear me. Okay, well, we, 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 we would have really loved to get uh, uh, an official there. I know she was trying to get somebody to talk to us, but it's been hard so far. So, so far, they are still trying to contain that fire. Mm. Just you heard from Sarah, the traffic will be really bad in that area. So be... I wanted to even ask if the bridge has been compromised. The, um, to be too early, yeah, yeah to, to tell them at all. Maybe eventually they'll let us know. But it's something that we have to go and check later and see. But for now, traffic in that area is going to be really bad. So don't be going to the island. But that's not the only route to the island, no. Yeah, but that means everybody will not be diverted. It's not the major route for those, for those of us com coming it's from. No, 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 people will divert. Okay. Right, and if they're diverting to the terminal, it's because, yeah. Those yeah. coming from the Badagri Expressway is a direct link for them. Those coming from the Ekbori Bridge is a direct link for them. So most of them, from Surile end to the island, Eko Bridge is a direct link. And mm, so yeah. that's EEM. Eko Bridge ends at Akongo, usually. Right. And so those people from that axis will have to then find their way to go and take either the Ring Road or Ijora and... Yeah. Really, really sad indeed. Wow. Okay, so we have to move on to another topic, but hopefully before the end of the show, if we get an update from Sarah, we'll de definitely bring that to you. Now, the Nigerian police force on Sunday ordered personnel across the states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory to stop demanding custom papers and tinted permits on the highways from drivers. According to the report, no policeman should demand or your custom papers except they are on a joint operation, but not just on routine mayor checks. Now, we'll be having on the show very soon the Acting Force Public Relations Officer, CSP Muiwa Adejobi, shortly, hopefully very soon he will join us. But it's interesting. Okay, is it on? Hello, sir, are you there? Yes, I'm with you. Oh, fantastic. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to have you on the show. We're so excited to have you. So we see a lot of things happening in the police force. Recently, we saw that the federal government released um, funding for their uniforms, you know, that it should be getting um, the uniforms across the country. We're seeing that you're now telling us that we shouldn't be um, asked about our permits for our tinted glasses. We're seeing that customs shouldn't be disturbing us. Listen, is this for real? Or this is just one of those flash in the pan kind of reforms that the police is doing? Well, generally, this is a new, we're under a new leadership in the Nigerian police force. The leadership of IGP Usman Nakali Baba is someone who has uh, that standard to lead the Nigerian police force. We, uh, we, I made a statement on behalf of the force that um, policemen on the road should not be demanding for custom papers and tinted glass permits. Yeah. It is, that doesn't mean that we are abolishing the law or we are not going to do what we should do. But for now that the, the issuance of tinted glass permits has been suspended by Nigeria police force, the, the suspension uh, came up around June 2021. Not a recent, not a new thing. It's been there. I only reminded our men of the directive of the Inspector General of Police. Uh, it's, we are not issuing any tinted glass permit for now because we are trying to, to overhaul the system and see how we can review the processes. Uh, we have noticed that uh, the processes were not too good enough when the IGP came on board. So it suspended the, the issuance of this um, of tinted glass permit. Right. And okay. that's why we are, we are actually reminding our men uh, not to be demanding for tinted glass permit because we don't issue and you cannot be demanding for what you don't give out. Okay, uh, all right. We've noticed that Nigerians... Okay. Can I go ahead? Yes, well, sir. Yes. Let me quickly ask we... you this question. How aware is the police about this new order? Because what we hear is, or what we see is when you make an order like this, you still see policemen on the road demanding for the exact things and be arguing with you that who gave that order. So have they been sensitized on what not to demand for, or is this just for the public to they, fight they, their they way are, out? They, they, are, they are fully aware. Any policeman claim, claim, claiming ignorance of this is a liar and is a deviant. I, mm. I stand to be quoted anywhere. This directive was given uh, on 7th of um, 
June 2021, mm -hmm. after a strategic meeting with three commanders by the Inspector General of Police, this same Inspector General of Police, IGP Usman uh, Kali Baba. So every policeman is aware of this directive. So whoever that is claiming ignorance of this is not being sincere, okay. uh, is not faithful to the cause of the job. So it is, it is not a new law, it's been there for almost, almost a year now. Okay. So nobody can claim ignorance of this, this directive, okay. of not checking it. However, the, the, the directive still goes further to say that our men have the right under the law to stop and search any vehicle uh, with tint, uh, tinted glasses. Uh, section is a matter of law. There's, there's uh, what we call motor vehicle prohibition of tinted glasses uh, act of 1991. This is a law that has been in existence since 1991. It is not a new thing. The issue of tinted glass, I uh, notice that engineers don't understand uh, the, this, the legal framework. There is a, there's an act, 1991 act, prohibiting the use of tinted glasses on vehicles. Whatever you put on your glass that is making occupants invisible, it is illegal. The fine is 2,000 naira or imprisonment not exceeding six months. In as much as we know this law exists, but we just need, and the IGP section three of this act empowers the Inspector General of Police to be the authority in charge, assessing and issuing tinted glass permits. It is so wishes. Uh, the only condition, we have two conditions when you can use tinted glasses on your vehicles, on earth brand and for security reasons. And these things must be tendered to the office uh, before the office of the Inspector General of Police, who will in turn assess and give approval if he so wishes. It's okay. not automatic. So okay. our men on the road, when we have vehicles with tinted glasses, for now, because we have stopped issuance of these tinted glasses, what we are telling our men is just stop these vehicles, check the occupants and check the vehicles. That doesn't mean we are, we are, we are, we are abolishing the law, no. Very soon, by the time we perfect the process, we are going to inform Nigerians that we have commenced issuance of tinted glass permits again. Everybody should go and process. Now, I've noticed again that Nigerians are saying, fine, it is criminal. It is not even allowed in any way. That same act is saying that if you assist anybody to procure tinted glasses on your vehicle, it's criminal. You are going to be charged to court, and the case will be heard in federal high court, not magistrate, not state high court. It is federal mm -hmm. high court yeah. case uh, that have the, that federal high court has judicial over this case. So we don't want engineers to go and be fixing uh, things on their glasses. Fact, what the law says is that you, you are not be allowed to use tint on your glasses, except the two conditions I've, I've just uh, mentioned. So we want engineers to understand now that. It is not that this law is being cancelled or it's not there again. The law is still there, but because we are processing and we are reviewing our processes, that's why the thing has been on suspension for now. Mm -hmm. However, whenever we want to, to commence, Enforce. we're going to inform Nigerians so that they can go and perfect whatever they want to perfect. And we want to know whether uh, it is a zonal basis or a command basis, state basis, that will be getting your, um, your permit, whether we are going to decentralize or not. Whatever the committee, there's a committee that's working on it now. Whatever the committee come, uh, comes up with, we're going to inform the engineers accordingly. Okay. I and think it's pretty clear. Custom papers. We'll come to we, that in we, a minute, sir. Let know. me go on a break, sir. Don't worry, there's a lot we want to ask you. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll, come, we'll talk about the custom papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have the Acting Force Public Relations Officer, CSP Muiwa Adejobi, on the show with us. Yes, uh, YK had a question before the break. Yes, I wanted to ask, because if as a civilian, you, there is no way you can tell a man carrying a gun that, no, it's not the law, you can't do it right now. He will do and undo. How are you going to control 
your policemen one, and two, what about the cars that come factory fitted? Because some cars come with well, their tinted glasses, tinted windows. The law, the, the, that, that particular act, go on, let's, let's read the law very well, uh, says that, 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 that those factory fitted ones should be removed entirely. Ah. But if there's need for you to use them, yes, it's a matter of law. It's not no sentiment in law. It's a matter of law. Is is motor vehicle uh, prohibition of tinted glass um, act of 1991? <clears throat> you have to remove it. There's no need for you to use at all. Uh -huh. But 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 in most cases, because of the conditions that uh, on head grant and for security reasons you can use, then that is subjected to processes and approval by the Inspector General of Police. That's what the law is saying about it. But in as much as we know that people still process for medical grant because of bad sight, security reasons, they still process this. We know, and that's why we, we said, because we don't issue now, it's a suspension. Then if, if you get across to our men and they are demanding for this, it's a very simple thing. What I did uh, last week when this message went out was to roll out some numbers. And Nigerians can testify that we have various platforms now that people re re react to their issues. We just had that policeman that question that even me, people still call me, I have been intervening on issues like that. Now, why are you demanding for this? Are you not aware of this? Most of them will run away because they know that there's another like that, there's a directive like that from the office of the IGP. Okay. And just because the person wants to be a deviant, that's why he's demanding for that. I, I don't urge Nigerians to attack any policeman, uh, respect is reciprocal. When they ask you this, politely, you can just ask them that, well, you can quote me. I speak on um, behalf of the police now, and okay. that's... Uh, All right, let me get a few questions here for you, sir. Said that. We have plenty of questions for you. Go ahead, Nima. Okay, so you mentioned deviant police officers Plenty. Now. Okay, go so ahead. Many. So what... Okay, you mentioned deviant police officers just now. So how, may, how do... What's the internal mechanism to check such police officers. Um, in the past, I had seen a police officer on duty, uniform unbuttoned, gun in the face like this, and in front of Lasso, and, he, and he, he put a gun to my face. Just this week, I saw another bus full of police officers stop my car, and as we were talking, they were smoking and, you know, drinking um, a, a dry gin at the same time on duty, and they were wielding guns in my area as well. What exactly is the mechanism? Do people, do, do, does the service have an unchecked um, um, or on, on disguised ways of checking police officers on duty to we, see whether they are conforming? We are, we are, we are mind, mind, mindful of the fact that we, are, we, are, we, we tend to have data like this. That's why we have certain mechanisms on ground to checkmate the excesses of our men. It's, it's a tradition, the police, that we have, we have escort. Escort is not a new thing. It's been an old mechanism in the police. LGP monitoring unit, complaint response unit, and PCB, that's Public Complaint Bureau. And on, on social media everywhere, this, this, on our platform, people have been interacting with us, lodging complaints uh, against police actions and inactions. There's, we can't rule out the fact that we're going to have Deviant. It's a social societal thing. Even when, when Jesus Christ, as a Christian, I know when Jesus Christ <laughs> has some disciples, are 12 disciples, one of them misbehaved. So when you calculate simple ratio of that, mm -hmm. to almost 300,000 police personnel, you should just imagine the number of deviants we are expected to have. Simple okay. arithmetic. <laughs> we, we will know and we are mindful of that. That's why these platforms are there to checkmate their excesses. And for Nigerians to always complain uh, against police actions, are in and we have been responding to their, to their issues accordingly. CSP, so, let's, stay on, let's stay on that for a minute hello? because let's stay on what you just said for a minute. Responding to their issues. So some of these issues would include welfare. The many Nigerians have complained about welfare of the police. Mm -hmm. And you also said 300,000. It is almost impossible for you to actually guard 300, 300, 200 million Nigerians with just 300,000 policemen. So, what is the force doing? Because we know that your new IGP obviously is to... doing a lot of reforms. So let me give you what you're saying. So what, what are you what, what are you doing? Yeah. What consequences do they have at the end of the day? Since you have the mechanisms that you just mentioned, what? if there, if there have been consequences, start, is that not enough for... to deter? 
Yes, yes. Let me start from the the the, the welfare and recruitment. We know we don't have enough manpower, and that's why the president, uh, President Muhammadu Buhari, gave the directive of recruiting 10,000 intakes every 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 year. We have done 20. Uh, 20. They are training now. We are we are up, we are up, we are on 2021 recruitment. I will soon commence 2022 recruitment. So on a yearly basis, we'll be uh, having 10,000 intakes, and we have been doing this. And of course, we have gone um, um, is electronic recruitment process now. Uh, gone are the days when you used to have large number like one million applying. Now there is application, there is software that is helping us to do screening. Uh, and the lives with the NIA number. If you are old, too old to join the police immediately while applying online, you'll be knocked, you'll be knocked off. So this, this has assisted us. And of course, on the general welfare of the of police personnel, you know, for a very long time, the issue of giving kids to police had, had been jettisoned. Uh, but recently, the IGP has associated that system, uh, giving directive. <coughs> to DLS, that Department of Logistics and Supply, and quartermasters to issue out uh, kits and a cartridge uniform to police uh, personnel. Mm -hmm. This is going to be on quarterly uh, basis. So FDIGB, this is going to be on quarterly basis. And our men have been receiving this, uh, these kits. Apart from that, there are so many uh, benefits from talking about welfare of our men in cooperative facilities, the ability of our men to have access to some of the uh, agri loans. Uh, Bank of Agri has uh, been partnering with us now so that we can have loans to do so many things and accommodation, barracks. The IGP uh, is building many barracks, renovating some across the country. And of course, uh, we are working uh, hard to have better condition of service. Okay. You know, the ongoing issue is increment, increment in salary, deduction, uh, stoppage or deduction of taxes of rack and file. And so many other things the federal government uh, has done to make sure we have better condition of service under the leadership of this uh, okay. IGP. Let me pause you so for a quick we, second. Very, very soon. Let me pause you for a quick second. When I come back, Hello? we're going to continue with the questioning. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still speaking with CSP Muiwa Dejabi. This had a question before the break. Go yes, ahead. sir. So the law says that no policeman should demand custom papers except they are on joint operation and not just mere routine. How do we know the difference between the mere routine and joint operations? Can you explain, sir? Let, let me correct that. There is, it's not a matter of law. There is no law that is saying they should not demand. Okay. It's just a matter of uh, professionalism and costly. Uh, if our, our men on the road are demanding for customs paper, if they have not been trained to detect fake documents, mm. it's just going to be creating conflicts exactly. on the road. Oh. If you demand, if what you have not been trained to, if I have, me as me, I have custom papers with me, I don't know, I cannot detect whether it is fake oh, or genuine. Mm. And in most cases, we have been having complaints from members of the public, from Nigerians, the way some of our men delay them unnecessarily because of custom papers. So and that's why the, the, the airports felt that no, instead of keeping Nigerians waiting because of custom papers, just basically check what your own law as a police is saying to check at your point. The vehicle license, certificate of insurance, and driver's license. Very simple. Then you search the vehicle, section 49 of police uh, acts 2020 has empowered the police to do stuff and start and to search individuals to search vehicles, search them, and let them go. The essence of all these stop and search points, uh, checkpoints, checking papers is to detect crimes right. or criminals and to, to, to curb uh, crimes and criminality. It is not to look for money or to harass Nigerians 
or to subject them to Thank unnecessary you, hardship. So if you have checked these vehicles and the occupants and not incriminating fund on them or in the vehicle, just allow them to go. If our men are not on joint operations, whether at the border or special operations okay. with the custom, we have directed them not to be demanding for custom papers. We have deployed them to highways, to certain places, to various points to curb crime and criminality. And the method, the strategy is clear. Check occupants, whoever you check that's not having any gun, any offensive weapon on him, definitely is not going to anywhere to commit okay. any offense. So All right. they have the power to stop, they have the power to search, and of course, if they are not on joint operation with customs, we right. have told them not to be demanding okay. for customs. Because right. they have it, they won't be able to know whether it's even genuine. All right, let me let YK throw in a question. Go ahead, YK. But at these checkpoints, when they stop young boys, they are always going for their phones and their computers. They are not even looking at the tinted glass. It's the phones and the computers. Uh, you are a Yahoo, Yahoo boy. Isn't that illegal? You accuse. Well, it is. It is. It is. It's a professional misconduct. Hmm. Uh, I, if you don't have a right to check somebody's phone or laptop on the road, except such items are exhibits in a case under investigation, and they must have been registered as exhibits. Which, of course, I know you won't do that on the road because, at a glance, getting you a can't tell. meeting somebody collecting phone, at that point in time, those items are not exhibit. So a policeman does not have the right to stop Nigerians, either young or old, to be searching their phones or their laptops. No. If you think you suspect anything, and you reasonably suspect anything going wrong or something wrong, take them to your station, mm, no open a case file, take their statement, subject these items to thorough investigation. Then at that point in time, you have right to check and question them based on what and what you have found on their on their items, on their laptop or whatever, or electronic devices. So, but on the road, it is not allowed. It is not proper. Okay. It is on police. It is not our job. Okay, let me take this call from Kechuku from Lafia. Good morning, are you there, Kachuku? I'm there. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. I'm not a problem on this issue. This is Yes, I'm there. I'm speaking and talking. The issue of policemen talking to you, checking your vehicle license and the uh, driver's license, you have all this. Still, they try to to persuade you to give them money. And on, on that process, you will see that they will be asking you your, your, your tire is worn out. This one is this one. The paper is, there is an error on that paper. What? We are not the one printing papers. The road is not good for that uh, uh, in the first place. The vehicle can be moving and the stone can break your windscreen. All these things. The road has to be motorable before then demanding for all these things. But you see, they will keep you, persuading you to, do, to, to collect funds from you. And when you give them, say you give them money, they will not release you. That kind of issue is not good. When you have driver's license and the vehicle license are complete, they say, allow you go. That's my concern. Thank please. you very much. And that's what he's saying, that once that, that has been done, they shouldn't be extorting Nigerians at this point. Correct, sir? Please verify. Yes, like, like I said so. Yeah, policemen are not deployed to, to, to roads or their various points to go and collect money. We are not tax collectors. For now, we have not been generating revenue for the government. And the money you pay empowers or enriches individual pockets, mm -hmm. not going to the paws of the government. Mm -hmm. We all know the Nigerian government has a pause. That is TSA, take you stress your account. If it's not going there, what, what, why are you empowering individual? If you pay to a policeman, demand for receipt from him. Let the issue receive so that the two of you will sign and can't sign, so that you know you have paid the legitimate, the legitimate views. And even on the issue of tinted glass, the fine, the fine is 22,000 naira, and the prison not succeeded in six months. Why people are paying 20,000 naira, 10,000 naira to settle on the, on, the, on the road? It's not reasonable. If I were you, I would ask him, well, if you have arrested me, take me to your base, exactly. take me to your station. I will be patient enough to go to the station. Hmm. Then I'm going to see the head of the station. This is a problem, this is what I have. Even some... Sir, don't go. Hello, sir. No CSP. 
Ah, please, we have to talk to him more. Hello, sir, are you there? Okay, I think we got disconnected. We got to get him back. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. We lost you for a minute. Are you there? Oh. Okay. Well, I was saying, uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, I, I was saying, instead of you paying to policemen on the road to settle cases, it's good for you to go to the station, station. go and have your case settled there. When okay. you pay to someone on the road, the money is not going to the post of the it's police. It's going to their pockets. Okay. Not to the post of the federal government. Sir, we don't all right, let me pause you, sir. There's plenty of uh, questions. So. TSA. We've, sir, we've, we've gotten that, that point. The altercation on the road is usually tense between police officers insisting on, on um, harassing, uh, checking like for these me. documents that we have talked about. So can you give us a number where the person is in such a situation that they can call and there will be immediate response to interfere in the situation? Well, we have, we have many, many numbers. I may not be able to roll out often now, but I'm sure that my own number has always, has always been there. Uh, my own number, personally, I've given out to people on Twitter, on my, on my handles, 080-3716-8147. 080-3716-8147. Or most of the Nigerians now, they are on Twitter. Uh, the police too is on Twitter with them. At police NG, at police NG, or at police... NG underscore CRU. The CRU is that outfit that Nigerians always like to operate to deal with on a regular basis. At police NG underscore CRU. You can get me my number, and I've, I've rolled out numbers of command PROs. All command PROs, their numbers are on, on, online, on our Twitter, on our handles, everywhere. And of course, you, you can get across to CPs. There was a time I rolled out numbers of commissioners of police across across the country but i know and i'm sure that so far so good nigerians have been getting across to us on all right so let me and ask you this question question on no. twitter let me, let me let me let me ask you this question let me be sure i'm very clear so even though the police we interface with on the road might not be reformed or might still be behaving like the old police we are almost guaranteed that the head per station at least has been reformed enough to know the law. So even if you get harassed, once you know the area or the command the police is from, okay, from area C or area F, whatever it is, you can actually go to the head and find and demand justice. Because some people say they get this harassment and they feel like even the boss, the DPOs, they are complicit in this mm. and they get really scared. So are you guaranteeing us now that the boss in the station would be able to protect the rights of the Nigerian citizen, even if there are boys on the road? are working against it. To help our butchers, that one. I had a yes, case recently. Yes, that, that's what that's... I'm saying, and I'm still echoing it now. I'm echoing it now that when you have issues with our men, mm -hmm. I, will not, I will not encourage Nigerians to be dragging issues with them on the road mm -hmm. because they are harmed. Mm -hmm. Don't drag any issue with them on the road. Mm -hmm. if, if it is 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minutes you want to, 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 to waste to make sure you get justice, please be patient enough. Go with them. I always encourage you to go with them. When they get to that division, just ask for the DPO or the most senior person on ground. Okay. When you get to that area command, ask for the area command. If the area commander is not on seat, at every point in time, we have what we call incident duty officer. The incident duty officer takes charge of the station when the DPO or area commander is not on ground. And I've been encouraging engineers to always ask for incident duty officers or the DPO, as the case may be. Okay. Get to them. Talk to them. They will attend to your matter. Our men on the road tend to misbehave because they think the engineers don't have time to, to go okay, with let them. Me, let they me... don't have time to waste. They only want to settle with them on the road. Right. See, Be let me go and break. Oh, sir, even the when I, show, when so I, I come back. The system. Even the station. Let me go and break quickly. I have a problem right now. I will discuss. Let me come back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we still have our CSP. Why can't you have a question before the break? Go ahead. Yes, because you said we should go to the police station. I recently I um, assisted a nephew of mine to go and report an issue, a criminal offense, to the police. The police 
started asking him for money. Hmm. He's a young boy. He saw that they were taking, there were these people taking young girls to uh, Libya. Hmm. So he called, so he now went to the police with this issue. Now they are telling him, hey, he calls them 45,000. And he's like, I mean, I thought I was helping Nigeria by reporting yeah. this matter. Now it has become my own jigger. So yeah. ah, he's refused to be picking their number. So this is at the police station. Mm. This is not on the on road. The road. The road. Okay. This police station that you're advising us to go. Okay. That's my first one. And then the second one is from um, uh, Festus Akimboyewa. He says, the police PRO said that they employ 10,000 officers every year. Question is, how many officers retire every year? Truth is, there is no real growth in our police. Can you answer those two questions, please? All right. Well, where, where do you want to start from? Is it from the report at the station or this recruitment? A anyone. Anyway, anyone. They, they, the recruitment, the recruitment stuff. There is no how 10,000 police officers will be exiting annually. So it's better for us if we recruit 10,000 annually. There, there's no how it's not a half gain. Because I'm very sure I've not seen that record that more than 10,000 officers are are exiting the job annually, no. Uh, whatever it is, we have started somewhere. If you are taking 10,000 uh, annually, for now that's the approval of the government, the IG will not recruit himself. He doesn't have the power to just go ahead and to recruit. Because when we recruit, the method now is that we're going to recruit, have the approval of the president, and the president will release fund for, for, the, for the training of these uh, intakes. So that's the method. So with what we have on ground, let us start from somewhere, okay. and we are going to somewhere. Then uh, the stations, when you, get, when you get to stations and they are demanding for money, take note, every charge room where you lodge your complaints is always situated close to DPU's office. And it's a reason. The design was strategic that the, because the DPO must take charge, supervise whatever happens in the charge room. <coughs> Go to any police station. When you see the charge room, you see the police DPO's office. The DPO's office will be there. So when they are demanding for money, you may get to DPO, tell them they are demanding for money. I, as a, as, as a PR person, have noticed that the police is having issues uh, from two major areas, the roadblock issue and charge room problem. This is what I discussed with our senior officers yesterday. So I'm doing a memo to the IGP to see how we can work on our charge room offices to make, it, to make them model ones and to have experts who are going to be trained <laughs> specifically to be in charge of our charge rooms, because our charge room is built like our reception. The way you see when you get to any corporate firm, that's how we want it to be when you get to police stations. I call you courses, welcome you, listen to your cases. The, the issue of demanding for money to report or to lodge any complaints or to check people <coughs> in the cell, it is not allowed. It's unprofessional. All right. And uh, we are taking it up because I want to do a memo to the IG suggesting those and those that will be All right. working. We, in unfortunately, our business, CSP, this we, have to, we have to wrap up with you. We, we can't take any more. But I cannot wrap up this conversation without asking the question I've been asking police for the past 10 years. Is your horrible uniform that your <laughs> men are wearing on the road, that black and black, please. We don't like it. We don't like it. Mm. This one you're wearing looks nice and decent and presentable. Yes. Can't you make the, all the police to wear this well, one that you're well, wearing? Well, the, wearing uniform must have approval of the government. And you know that we, today, even this time around, we're having black Monday, Tuesday, and this blue Tuesday, Wednesday, and Camo Wednesday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. For now, for now, that's the system. When you see black, you see blue, you see Camo. Just continue with us. And I know that with the leadership we're having, even if you see black original cashmere, I know you, my sisters, you are going to like somebody on black original cashmere they don't when you it. wear it. It is not the color. It is the turnout and the charisma. Okay. Uh, let, let me use this one. The swag. The swag. We don't, there's nothing swagging in black. Police. There's nothing swagging in black and black. That, horrible. Yeah, it, it, we it, have it, to it, run. It, Thank you, CSP. I have black, to run. CSP, at this point, I have to run. I'm so sorry. It was a Thank pleasure you. having you. We enjoyed that conversation with you. We'd like to bring you back because it seems there's so much happening with the police. Mm. And we know we are on top of this. This is started Hensas, right? Hashtag Hensas. So it's important that we are following up with you on what you're doing. Okay, so something interesting happened over the weekend at TVC Premises. Watch this clip. It's a bright and sunny morning. The skies are blue, 
the setting is blue. I am blue. My mic is blue. My jump is wearing blue jeans. And of course, we are here to celebrate Kellogg's, who are of course are launching a new grain, a new cereal. Kellogg's, of course, Nigeria's number one cereal. We are here to have breakfast with Funke Akindele and a number of distinguished hosts, our guests, which we'll talk to later. But then, it's a wonderful morning, a wonderful time to take some grains, and that is all that we are doing here. The place is set, that's the stage. We're getting ready, we're expecting people, people are coming in. It's going to be a wonderful time as we launch Kellogg's Go Green. Now, Kellogg's, of course, has been the number one cereal in Nigeria, giving us a whole lot when it comes to breakfast. So chill with me. I'm going to take you all through the events today, and we are going to have a great time. I'm so happy that I'm a brand ambassador for this kind of product because Kellogg keep bringing up new products for the family. They make the breakfast interesting. Yeah, so uh, we're here. It's live at the Kellogg Go Green Lunch. And yeah, I'm about to take some Kellogg's now and try it out. And uh, I love cereal. So let's see how this one goes and how it tastes. Let me get my water inside first. I already have my milk in it. And then just straight, just that easy. Oh, by the way, 100 naira only, very cheap. Okay, so, yeah. Mm. Nice one, I can feel the grains here. Wonderful um, breakfast, I must say. yourselves please because my beautiful mothers are here and the month of March is for we women I like International Women's Day right oh my god and Mother's Day coming when I mean I say that Sunday here's this month we women are so special we mothers are so special thank you so much Kellogg's so I'm going to ask some questions and the mother that passes the question or the child will come and join me here We'll have our go greens together. We'll unveil together. Are we ready? Are we ready? I am going to call one child and one mother. And I will ask a question concerning go greens. If you answer it correctly, you're going to join me on this table. We're going to have brave verse together. Are you ready? Okay, if you want to answer the question, raise up your hand. Let me just ask first. Nobody should spin it out too. We know that gold grains is multi-grain, right? A multi-grain cereal, right? They put plenty grain inside. Can you tell me one grain out of the plenty grain inside Kellogg's gold grains? Who can answer that question? Me. A round of applause for her. A round of applause for her. Like if you eat Kellogg's gold grains now, it will keep you what? It keeps you active and alive. A round of applause for my baby girl. Where's mommy? Mommy, come over and join on this table. You've got a brilliant, beautiful daughter. And all the children here are beautiful children. They are all brilliant. They are special. They are wonderfully made. They are strong because they take care loads. Hi, my name is Alme Adega Mushori Reoluwa, and I'm here with Funke Akindele. We're doing a special program to be launching Kellogg's Go Greens, and today we had a lot of fun. If I have to say, I love Kellogg's Go Greens. A particular activity that we did, I loved it. It was the cultural dancing. a really fun way and it was getting so intense and I couldn't believe they did it. Well, the Kellogg's brand is something that was, we launched it in this market 
we had to go back to do a research and it was relaunched and since the relaunch it's been fantastic the level of reception has been great okay the, the, the gold green brand is the newest kid on the block we just got into the market and we are having a big lunch here that's why we're having breakfast with funky akindele to try to tell everybody what the gold green brand is all about and the whole essence behind this is just for the fact that why mothers struggle to get different grains to provide the necessary vitamin for their family, we will have all embedded in one. It has four grains in it. It has corn, it has uh, soya. The maize, the rice, the unicorn and the soya. Imagine one package containing all these. Oh, bet me you know that's the best. It's actually amazing. And I actually like my mom to actually go to the market and buy some for me. Grains! Yes! Go! wonderful day of fun, of games, food, family, friends and of course Kellogg's Go Green. We launched the product today and you can go out and get it at any store anywhere close to you. It's been a wonderful time. Thank you for being my guest as I took you through this ride. See you next time. All right, so we back. we're back. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the Kellogg's experience here in TVC. That's all we can take on the show today. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.